All right, boys and girls, getting our retro on today. We'll talk a little bit more as we go. We got the BRN601 out of the range today. Let's have some fun. Just low. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all for a grunt. Okay, speaking of grunts, guys, welcome back. This is Iraq Veteran 8888 here, Eric. We're going to be talking a little bit about this BRN 601. Really, really cool rifle. And uh, a lot of very respectable and deliberate nods to the first ever military issued AR 15 to the United States military back in 1960, okay? So this was literally like the gun that started it all, okay? It takes a lot of lines that would, what would eventually become the M16A1 and obviously things such as the A2, the longer stock and everything like that. But there's some very considerable features that make this a very unique rifle, okay? And we'll go over some of these features. You got the 20 round waffle mags, okay? So these waffle style magazines is a very early style of magazine. Okay, so they did, uh, you know, make the correct magazines for this rifle. One of the most striking and distinct features is the uh, green furniture, which is really awesome, with the triangular shape 4M, which will definitely later come on the M16A1. A lot of people associate the triangular handguard with the A1. So it's got the A1 handguard. It's got this uh, kind of funky... Um, triangular shaped charging handle. Okay, that's a very early feature, a very early takeaway from the early ARs. Um, and one thing I will say on this, and guys, remember, this is a, a basic and sort of throwback AR. So it doesn't have like a lot of the, the crazy modern enhancements that ARs are known for. Um, one thing I can say is if you're gonna charge this thing like you would charge a normal charging handle on a modern AR, you cannot get to that thing with the palm of your hand. There's no way. You're gonna have to reach up there and grab it with two, two fingers to charge it, okay? You do have a bolt stop, okay? The triangular shaped charging handle, no forward assist, okay? This is pre-forward assist, okay? And you got a smooth side bolt. So because there's no forward assist, those ridges are not in the side of the bolt for the forward assist to push the bolt forward. So it's a smooth side bolt. It's a chrome line 20 inch barrel with a one in 12 twist. One in 12 twist is best suited for about 55 grain bullets, okay? In the early stages of the Vietnam War, that was one issue they ran into, a uh, combination of bad ball powder and just, they didn't issue proper cleaning materials for the rifles and a lot of soldiers gave the AR-15 a bad rap in the Vietnam War for that reason. But as time went on and they got the faster twist, went with the heavier uh, projectiles, changed around the powder a little bit, did more experimentation. They wound up finding a, a really good load and the accuracy of the AR really came uh, to, to full, uh, full effect there. Uh, the flash hider is a three prong, so that's one distinct feature. The weight of the barrels, relatively light pencil weight. Uh, we see what is essentially a A2 front, front sight or A1 style front sight post with a bayonet lug. And it's just an awesome classic rifle, you know, the 601, um, you know, as a clone, it's a really, really faithful clone. Um, now, one thing I want to mention before we shoot anymore in today's video, I've actually handled some of these prototypes. Uh, I'm not going to say where, but a local collector here in Georgia had several early AR variants, and I was able to handle some of them. And I'll tell you just briefly some cool stories, okay? One story is I got to handle Ronald Reagan's M16A2. 
that was a gift from Colt. The military got a contract with, uh, well, obviously they've always had contracts with Colt, but they just, they had signed a huge contract with the military and Colt gave Ronald Reagan an M16A2. And back then, obviously it was select fire, but it's a select fire, that's probably my ear pro, uh, M16A2. I got to handle that, which was cool. I got to handle a very early version, a Colt version, or I guess it would be an Armalite or whatever, like a really early version of this, this exact rifle, okay? But with the exception of, it had this Rube Goldberg welded Ford assist on it. It was a rifle just like this that Eugene Stoner had cut the side of the receiver and welded on an experimental early Ford assist in his shop. So it's, it's one that Eugene Stoner worked on with his own two hands. I got to handle that, which was really cool. And I've got to handle some of the really, really early prototypes that have the, the charging handle, like, you know, up here in the, uh, in the carry handle, okay? And with the back of light furniture. Now that's one departure that some of the Brownells Retros makes from the originals. Uh, some of the original guns that have that dark brown looking furniture, it's actually like a back of light material. And I imagine that's, uh, I don't know if that stuff like causes cancer when you make it or what, but so I, I know that they have to go with the, you know, the plastic. Um, but this is a really faithful recreation of a nice early uh, AR variant that uh, not a lot of people get a chance to handle, much less own or shoot. So the retros offer a nice opportunity to get into a, a really cool retro uh, AR without breaking the bank, okay? going to shoot a little bit more. Now this is just a standard smooth side 20 round mag. We've also got a P mag that we're going to test. I know that's blasphemy. Putting a uh, modern magazine in a, uh, in a vintage gun, but we're going to do it. Okay. 20 round box. Take a few more shots here. Uh, we're just running this federal MSR 55 grain ammo here. It's showing a 20 or 3240 feet per second. This is the only 55 grain ammo I had laying around, but it, it's shooting pretty good. Okay, there's nothing like a nice full-sized AR with iron sights. I mean, these things are such a joy to shoot. Uh, the trigger on this gun is not terrible. It's got a little bit of uh, slack and take up, but a nice crisp break. I want to say the break on this uh, rifle is probably about seven pounds, uh, so very respectable. I mean, it is a military gun with a military trigger. Okay, let's take a few shots here. Just have a little fun. Yep. Ooh, that wind's blowing. Favorite on the low side, Eric. There you go. <laughs> okay, P Mag, give that a shot. And look, that P Mag almost kind of matches the furniture a bit. Look at that; they ended up working out kind of cool. It's re re retro, re retrofied. Okay, the sights aren't terrible. You know, it's a uh, a basic diopter in the rear with two. Uh, let's see, yeah, it flips. Does it? Oh, it's just really stiff, but you got two adjustable uh, sections of diopter here. It's adjustable for windage, but not for elevation. Your ele elevation adjustment is in the front sight post, okay? Have a little fun here. Some people aren't a fan of the A1 style uh, triangular handguard. I find it actually fits the hand quite nice. Uh, it's really not bad. And you gotta think, you know, being issued this rifle back in the early 60s had to be weird. You got to think, you know, rifles back then were, were iron and wood and, and just these brutus implements, you know. When you start adding these fancy plastics and weird construction methods and alloys, this was a very futuristic rifle when it first came out. Had to have been a really interesting time to be issued a rifle like this.
Okay, looks like it's not liking the PMAC. It says, get it out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this? It, it actually may even say in the instructions that you're not supposed to use PMAGs, but I figured we'd try one. Uh, just over the coyote's back, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't liking the PMAG. That's well, okay. It's okay. That's why we, we tried. Test it. I'll go ahead and load a mag while I'm talking here, guys. Um, you know, these retros are neat, and I think that what winds up happening in the AR world, you know, when it comes to these, these rifles and all, it's kind of hard to break outside of the norm and, and figure out something kind of unique, right? So you're, you're stuck in, in kind of two different situations. You've either got to build something really crazy modern, race gun, and add every type of random part and make something kind of truly unique and special or just build it out to some really specific specification. Okay, or go back in time and instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, take a nod to something original. So we see that in the gun industry kind of happening a lot right now. I mean, all these people that are calling on Colt, for instance, to reissue the Python. And all these people keep saying, hey, Colt, we want, a bot we want a modern Python, make a Python. And then they don't realize that all the gunsmiths that made those Pythons back in the day are either passed away now or they're just not around anymore. A lot of the, you know, the, the, the methods of construction for making those old guns just hasn't been passed down as well as it should. A lot of those old craftsmen that used to make those really nice revolvers back in the day, they're just not around anymore. So I guess what I'm saying is sometimes you have to be able to appreciate the classics a little bit to understand where you're moving to go forward. And that's what makes uh, you know, shooting these guns so much fun is uh, if you can get behind a rifle with iron sights that was issued to the military in 1960 and shoot good with that, there's probably a pretty strong chance you're going to be able to hop behind any modern AR and do the job. So Back to the basics. Yeah, back to the basics. The sights on this never run out of batteries. As long as you can do your part, you got it. You gonna go for that half size again? Yeah. All right, send it. Just under it. Just to the right. Got it. Uh, barely clipped the right side. There you go. Uh, favor and under it still. Bring it up a little bit. There you go. You're still on the right yeah, side. Yeah, it's a hard target to see. Yeah, it's tiny. Not bad. I mean, I'm just kind of throwing them in there, sort of fire for effect, if you will. <laughs> you know, there's just something that you have to appreciate about just good old diopter sights. A rear diopter and a decent front sight post. Uh, I'll say that this rifle right out of the box, it zeroed just fine. It was on the paper right out of the box. It took just a little bit of tweaking to get it dialed in, and, uh, and we were out and running. So. Really cool stuff. Uh, we wanted to make this video to show you guys the 601 here. Really interesting rifle. It definitely scratches the vintage itch, which uh, is a lot of fun. Really cool stuff. You got a dust cover. Okay, still got a dust cover. Really neat. You know, there's just something about old DI guns that's just so much fun and uh, really scratches the collectible uh, niche for a lot of folks and uh, especially us, uh, com our, us poors that are never gonna, you know, have a $30,000 a uh, gun that belonged to, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan, all right? So not saying that's not cool because it certainly is. But uh, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it today. Maybe you got to learn something you didn't know and uh, got to have a look at a really cool rifle here. Definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you for believing in us and seeing value in what we do and supporting our efforts. You guys are awesome. Definitely want to take a moment to thank all of the folks who purchase man cans, t-shirts, merchandise over on the website. All the funds that we earn off of those uh, things go right back into supporting the channel, right back into our fight 
uh, you know, we are politically active, so thank you uh, in supporting our activism and supporting our content that we put out to uh, hopefully better the Second Amendment community. So uh, thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it yet again. We'll see you next time. Many more videos on the way, more retros, more cool old guns, more meltdowns, gunsmithing, um, firearms facts, gun gripes, five guns. We've got lots of things to do here on this channel. Make sure you subscribe, click that notification bell. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good one.